This couple are about to live out their dream. They're swapping the urban nine to five for an idyllic Spanish farm. I can't believe it. They're off in search of the good life with their two small children, harvesting their own almonds, picking olives, growing grapes and making wine. But they won't have a regular income, they've never farmed before, and they don't speak the language. It began with a holiday in Catalonia, where Martin Kirby and Maggie Whitman first discovered a nine-acre farm. It caught their imagination, and now, six months later, they're back to close the deal. <laughs> Local friends, Englishman Mac and his Spanish wife, Conchita, are on hand to steer them through the intricacies of Spanish property law. <laughs> Oh my god, I feel like it's like a crown jewels or something. <laughs> We're having a little celebration because we own this enormous key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's done, it's done. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hi darling. Yeah, we, we all now we all now have a little piece of paradise. This little piece of paradise is a snip at one hundred thousand pounds. It's a nineteenth century stone farmhouse set in a fertile vine covered valley with panoramic views of the surrounding Serra de la Pedrera mountains, southwest of Barcelona. At the end of a remote winding track, the farm is known locally as Lort de la Mar, Mother's Garden. Surrounding the house, an olive grove, a small vineyard, and a scattering of fruit trees, plum, peach, almond, hazelnut, and fig. I can't stop grinning and <laughs> pinching myself. And, uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's just like, it is still like a dream, you know, it's, it's, it's not quite real. You know. When I come back, the first thing, I want to get a table out and table and chairs out under that. <laughs> under those trees <laughs> and a meal and just get everyone around the table. This is exciting. Back in Norfolk, Martin and Maggie have sold their house and are eager to get on with their new life. My 40th birthday on Friday and all these sort of jokes about, oh, you know, life begins at 40 and, and it really is, you know, and, and it certainly is a new life beginning in my 40s. So. Um, and, uh, and I really feel that, that we, are, we are so lucky to have this chance at, at starting something fresh. For the past eight years, Martin's worked as night editor for a local paper on the gruelling 12-hour graveyard shift. It's his last day at the office, and understandably, he has few regrets about leaving. By the end of the shift at night, I'm completely naked. And, um, and that's, if ever any thoughts, doubts come into my head, it's immediately shunted out by the thought, well, hang on, you can't carry on like this. And you don't want to be here in five years' time saying, what here? Have you got proof of seven there yet? Martin's been here so long, it uh, took us all by surprise. I haven't seen a proof of But it's the sort of thing that uh, we've perhaps all thought about at some stage, uh, just sort of throwing in the towel and getting away from it and uh, doing something that we really want without the drudgery of sort of deadlines and telephones ringing in our ears and all that. What a brave move, brilliant. And uh, I guess it's the thing we all, we all wish we'd done and then it gets too late. Money will be tight. After paying off their mortgage, Martin and Maggie will be left with just 10,000 pounds. To try and generate some extra cash, Martin is writing a book about their new adventure and has sent the first few chapters to an agent. I mean, it would be just really nice if we had some news before we left for Spain. Uh, he's concerned about how we're going to, you know, keep body and soul together and to have some encouragement that his writing is going in the right direction. You know, um, it would just be, it would give him a great boost. Jobs and routine may be easy to leave behind, but friends, neighbours and relatives are another matter. Martin and Maggie have always lived in Norfolk and their Spanish-themed party is a chance to bid adios. I'm going to miss the house, no, actually. 
It's, you know, it's a lovely house, but it's more... No, it's more where it is, you know, it's more the village. Okay. Yeah, he said, I won't really miss the house, I'll just miss where it is. The pink around it. Pink. What kind is it? Oh, I should have plumbed there. Yeah. Ahead of them lies a two-day road trip, a brand new home and a brand new life in Spain. Okay. This is lovely. There we go. I'm not glad because it's not sunny. <laughs> well, even Spain isn't sunny at night. <laughs> it's winter. Sleet and sub zero temperatures are forecast back in England. But here, in the mild Spanish climate, the almond trees are already starting to blossom. The house is picturesque, but offers little in the way of modern comforts. Three bedrooms, two living rooms, kitchen with traditional open fire, no central heating, no dishwasher, no telly. But then again, if modern comforts were high on their wish list, Martin and Maggie would have stayed in Norfolk. The first priority is putting food on the table. Back in England, Maggie grew vegetables in a corner of her small garden, but here the plan is to live off the land starting with the creation of a huge vegetable patch outside the kitchen window. The aim here is to be self-sufficient as, as, as possible. Um, obviously, it's the first year, it's going to be a lot to learn and just have to see how it goes. We're going to start initially. We've got to get onions and garlic in now. I mean, we really have to crack on. And then Mac is promising to come in with his tractor and. We think we'll be able to get it just down here because he's got this lovely little tractor and uh, plough and turn it over. So that could all happen this week. <laughs> Even in late January, it's warm enough to eat outside and indulge the Mediterranean taste for the long, lazy lunch. Right, now we all pray. It's the first chance to put the farm's outdoor wood-fired oven to the test with some homemade pizza. Hello, do you come down the table? Right. Go on then. Looks good. Mm. Cheers. Well done. <laughs> Here's to the next one. <laughs> Neighbour Mac and his antique tractor make light work of Maggie's enormous vegetable patch. The soil's good, naturally fertile and easy to work. Even in the hot, dry summer, there will be no shortage of water. Several springs rising on the land feed a massive irrigation tank. And a mile of pipes takes the water to the olives, orchards and, most importantly, the vineyard. The vineyard is the heart of the farm, and the grapes will be Martin and Maggie's most important crop. When they're harvested and sold in late summer, they should fetch about 600 pounds. Not a fortune, but all the same, the biggest earner the farm can expect this year. Martin and Maggie's previous experience of viticulture goes no further than opening the bottle and drinking it. They've asked a neighbor, Alex, for some pruning lessons. Right, you must do um, form like, like this. This is the lower ones. Uh, one moment, I show you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We do not want that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. We and want this. This and this, this and this. This four. Okay. Four. Many times are three. Three or four. Three or four main. Yes. Okay. And, and you must the, uh, you must choose the the. The. The four. The shape, the, for the shape. Um, extremes, the not. All oh, right, the outside. Yes, the ones the which go out. Okay, okay. that um, <laughs> open, no? Yeah, to make it an open crown. Yeah, yeah we try here. We call it in Catalan head, this cup. Head. Cup. Yeah. head. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. This will give us a little money, we hope. Mm -hmm. we, can get, we can earn a little money from this. Yes, a, a little, little money. A little. I, I think, and in the first years, very little. The vineyard is the ultimate test. 
If the harvest is successful, they will have proved something to themselves and others. Their big adventure will be more than a mere pipe dream. Getting the grapes right is both an exciting and daunting challenge. I'm not quite sure. I sort of get to the last few and I think, hmm. Obviously, it's to make the difference between a really healthy, strong plant and um, not, so, not so strong. We're all set to have a good crop, so we've got to make sure that we, we um, treat them with respect and, and get it right. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. With only £10,000 to survive on in Spain, Martin and Maggie will have to be cautious with their money. Luckily, there is a long tradition of bartering in the area. So in return for advice on pruning, Martin is giving English lessons to Alex's wife, Remy. Or, it looks to me as if... It looks to me as if... if, as if um, yes, it is a family. Yes. Everyone is very happy. Yes. Maggie has soon fallen in with the rhythms of Spanish life and adopted the custom of the afternoon siesta. Martin is simply getting used to having free time. I feel hugely relieved. Work, I don't miss it, actually, because I've got other energies that I'm using. It's a different outdoor existence and uh, early days, but Ella seems to be getting well into it. Swing, treehouse, walk the dogs, you know, talk with us, do things with us, get more fun out of a beat up old cardboard box. Uh, and the, the place is just perfect for me. I can't honestly believe it. The key to self-sufficiency is recycling. Vine cuttings make a good fire and add an aromatic flavor to the local lamb. The flavour of this meat is phenomenal. Mm. Cheers. Salud. 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 In their old life, a family meal was a comparative rarity. Now it happens every night. Gracias. What do you say? Um, most that's guessing. When someone says okay. graphic, if you do something for someone and they say thank you, you say... What is the guesses? De nada. De nada. De nada. De nada. De. De, de nada. De nada. De nada. That, means, that means it's nothing, it's fine, no worries. De nada. And after dinner, nights in front of the telly are no longer an option. I don't miss TV at all, neither of us do. We're agonising over whether to get one because of the, uh, the benefit it would be for us to learn language. <laughs> But in terms of news and entertainment, no. Okay, sure. I really thought Ella would miss television and be quite demanding about it, but she's not. Oh, no. Nights out are thin on the ground too, but a fiesta in the local village is a chance for the family to meet the neighbours and make new friends. It's the Feast of St Anthony, patron saint of farming. Martin and Maggie have achieved a lot in just a few weeks. Spring and the first signs of growth are just around the corner, but with back-breaking work needed in the vineyard, there's the realization that life on the land is tougher than they ever imagined. And they'll have to learn to do business in Catalan. Spring. The trees are in full blossom, 
and flowering poppies and lavender are already spread throughout Martin and Maggie's nine-acre farm. Temperatures are in the balmy 20s, but the mountain night can be chilly. Pottering about the land to replenish the woodpile gives Martin plenty of exercise, and it's a far cry from his old life on the night shift. I feel well. Um, I now realise how low I was getting. I have a balance to my life. I've got my office corner established and I still use the computer and I write, but I do both. And then to stride out and gather timber with the dog first thing in the morning and, and to spend two or three hours on the land is a really lovely feeling. Blues the colour of the sky in the morning. Maggie's always outdoors by eight in the morning and likes to get at least an hour's work done before gathering the family for breakfast. It's lovely and peaceful. It's just a time to kind of gather your thoughts and uh, perhaps think ahead for that, about the day, what you try and do. It's like a meditative sort of thing, you know, you feel like you just can't take the time for yourself to, to, you know, to do that. But this is um, the best kind of alternative. Focusing on a simple job, you know, which can help just focus your mind and then other thoughts, you know, perhaps come and go and it's lovely. Maggie's been taking her neighbour's advice and planting vegetables the Catalan way. Cabbage, onions, garlic and lettuce are already flourishing in the farm's rich soil. But Maggie's not sure whether the same technique will work for her leeks. The way they plant their veg in, in this area is to, is to dig these trenches and then you plant into the side of the trench, on, of the bank sort of thing, makes like banks. And then the idea is that you fill the trench with water. The actual water is held in the trench rather than just watering the whole area. It keeps, it retains the water where it's needed because obviously where water is at a premium in this, in this country, you want to use it carefully. So I'm following the way they do it. You're dropping away this end. The land isn't obviously level. I need to probably build it up more this end. Otherwise these are gonna flourish this end and they're gasping for water at the other end. Hmm. Martin spends the bulk of his day writing and he's pinning his hopes on bringing in some money by securing a book deal. I've spoken to one agent who has it but hasn't read it yet, so I'm speaking to another agent who's very kindly shown an interest but hasn't, still hasn't read it. I've sent them 20,000 words. I've written about 25,000 now. The division of labour down on the farm is not quite what Maggie had in mind. In a way, we've got to be a bit more methodical about it, just to make sure that we both get the time we need. Producing the food is, you know, almost as important. I mean, writing could earn him, you know, more money, but um, that's more in the longer term. I mean, in the short term, I need to get out here and make sure we've got food, you know, to put in our mouths, really. Coming to grips with the local language is more complicated than it first seems. Catalonia has its own language, and although everybody can speak Spanish, day to day the family will have to be able to use Catalan. Five-year-old Ella is making new friends at the village school, and her grasp of Catalan already puts her parents to shame. Everybody at school says she understands a great deal of what goes on and she will occasionally, without thinking, ask for something, just a word or, or a command in Catalan to us. It is odd though, having, you know, your daughter saying words and things that you don't know whether they're right or wrong, or, you know. It's like she's, you know, got a big one up on you. And <laughs> Martin's convinced that the secret of learning Catalan is remembering your schoolboy French. Hola, hola, menjes pa, eh? Menjes pa. 
she was saying Menji's part, which was eating bread, eating bread, and if you draw the analogies with the French, mange, the pain. I'm not saying Catalan is like French or French is like Catalan, but it is the, the similarities are, are quite strong in many ways. Buying goods in the shops and, and that sort of level, I can I can cope reasonably well and increasingly so. Yeah. And I think with Ella and Joe picking up Catalan, I want to learn Catalan. I'd like to talk to these people. Tuesday is market day in the local village. Shopping is a relaxed recreational activity. Trolley gridlock is a thing of the past. Quite a social thing as well. I often meet up with Conchita. Well, I just arrived and have to buy some oranges and to look at the plants. Just going to look at the vegetables then. Yes. <laughs> Come on then. And shopping takes quite a long time here. And everyone chats away. And it's very friendly and very civilised, really. You, know. you can't really be in a hurry. It's a good opportunity, too, to try out Catalan, even if it sometimes means going home with too many strawberries. Four, five, five. Four, five, five. Four, five, five. Very To earn the most from farming, you need maximum yield. And on Maggie's farm, it's a job for two. Martin is now having to fit his writing around the daily work in the fields. Today's task is to clear the vines of thick weed and grass. Martin's getting stuck in with a rotavator bought in partnership with a neighbour. Maggie's on weeding duty and learning that her idyllic new life does have its drawbacks. I'm used to hard work, but this is something else, really. I've been getting um, like pins and needles at night and numbness in my, in my hand and going up my arm, which I, I've put down to mainly is the um, just tugging at these weeds, you know, for hours on end. Uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, I've obviously still got a lot of toughening up to do. The real battle is against this stuff, which is called, well, in Catalan, it's uh, Bolsa de Pastor, which is like shepherd's purse. Um, we have a shepherd's purse, a weed called shepherd's purse in England, but it's not quite the same as this. And um, here it's got a bit out of hand, I think, because of, obviously, uh, because of the changeover in owners. Um, this you know, work that should have been done has, you know, hasn't, hasn't got done at the right time and so the stuff's really got a hold because um, I don't intend to be doing this every year especially um, as we don't have a bath because it's pretty back-breaking work. <laughs> if they can afford it in the future, there's plenty of space for a bathroom in the unused barn at the side of the farmhouse. You can see the hole marks where... where there used to be a floor. We build a floor across. We're not using that space. We're just not using it. Then we knock through from the house and I agree, Joe, and put a bathroom yep. this end and then have a lovely bedroom that end with these big windows. It'd be phenomenal. What about a window, though, for the bathroom? You have put another one. She wants to sit in the, on the loo and look at the valley. No, I didn't. I want to lie in the bath. In the bath. In the bath. <laughs> I look out the window. Well, it'd be nice to look that way. The vineyard rotavator has been the farm's biggest capital expenditure so far. Maggie and Martin shared the cost with Perez and Nuria, their nearest neighbours, who live half a mile away across the fields. Nuria is the local expert on pest control. There's white fly um, and ch -ch -ch blanco. Mariposas. Case and problem. Zanahorias. A la mosca blanca. White fly. The new neighbourhood partnership is cemented with a celebratory bottle of carva. One of the real pleasant surprises 
was the neighbours have been lovely, uh, particularly Pera and Nuria. I was concerned that people here might be a bit introverted, you know, unsure about an English family descending and what they'd be like. <laughs> people in the village, on the whole, I've been staggered and delighted by how accommodating they could be. I'm not sure I'd be that open-minded. It's five months since Maggie and Martin began their new life and their labors in the vineyard are beginning to reap rewards. The vines have responded well to the drastic pruning. They've doubled their size and the first tiny grapes have appeared. They'll be the farm's biggest earner and a crucial part of a total turnover of about 1,200 pounds. The real secret of wine growing is constant vigilance. Spring is the time of year when mildew can damage tender buds. An attack could wipe out the entire crop. As a preventative, Maggie's been out at first light every day, dusting the leaves with sulphur powder. It was a great relief when we saw them all budding out from all the vines, because you know, we were convinced that we'd obviously you know, cut them back too much and kill them off. Martin, meanwhile, has been collecting and burning the prunings from the 130 olive trees. Come harvest time in November, the olives should bring in about 400 pounds. Vital money since Maggie and Martin have just received their first bills. Now the phone bill was a, was a blow, 300 quid, but it's understandable. Um, it's bound to go through the roof. And, uh, and I was talking to our families regularly, which we want to do, and our friends. But the car is the other thing. The, the Range Rover we've had to spend, oh, I don't know, 700 quid so far on the car. Any concerns over money or the demands of farm work are balanced by the new pace of life, where there's always time for Ella and Joe. You be careful now, Ella. OK? Wow, look in the water, look at all the fish. I figure that I've got 25 hours a week more with Ella. 25 hours, that's amazing. And Ella and I try, if we can, do something every day. Whereas before, I would um, see her for breakfast, you know, a fairly frenetic breakfast. Which is, they're always frenetic, aren't they? You say, yeah, come on, hurry up, we've got to get to school. By the way, I'm your dad. And uh, take her to school, maybe. And then not see her until the following morning. And I just like this, Ella, free, roaming, happy, having a good time. Mine's the one with the bit sticking out the side, okay? Are you ready? So yeah. go. Are you ready? Oh, mine's torn away. Oh, well, I'm having great fun. I'm not slightly like I'm appeasing Ella. Or, or do, well, I'm really enjoying myself. Stop cheating. But Daddy, Stop. if it's stuffed at the side, Yeah, it's fine. Want... It's all part of it. Ella's going to make the corner first, but it's not over till it's over. I'm speaking my way. Hang on a minute. Hang on, it's not over yet. Okay. The past five months have been a time for learning. New skills, a new language, and a new way of life. Summer's round the corner, the signs of a bumper crop, and a chance for the family to taste the fruits of their labor. While Martin will discover if he can earn essential money from his book. The long, hot days in Catalonia are working their magic down on Martin and Maggie's farm. Ruby red freckles appear on the grapes as they begin to ripen. The olives have grown to their full size, but it'll be at least five months until they are ready to pick. The heat of early afternoon is not a time for exertion but perfect for a lazy ladybird hunt in the wild grasses. Can you take the tin, Ella? That's a good girl. So when I start pulling around, then I find them, so... Look, Dad, there's one. Hurrah! In keeping with Martin and Maggie's organic principles, the ladybirds are put to work as pest police. Okay. Right, here we go. Let me just get it on and see what happens. 
Okay, Let's see if we can persuade the lead. Ooh, here we go. Go on, you're on. Right, tucking in straight away. Magnificent. Martin is continuing to work on his book, and with no income for six months now, an advance would really help finances. But he still can't interest a publisher. I think a lot of people will be interested, and I think all the facts are there. So I get very nervous because the story's good enough and should be told. Whether I can tell it well enough for somebody to pick it up and run with it is another matter. Uh, Maggie gets more frustrated than I do on the fact that nobody's jumping around offering us bucket loads of money. I was gazing idly up the valley at nothing in particular. The dogs were having their early morning forage beside the track to our little Spanish farm. The birds were singing for all they're worth and crisscrossing the blue sky. The church in the village half a mile away had just chimed seven and the whole scene was bathed in the honey light of dawn. The first big success story on the farm is Maggie's vegetable patch. When you grow your own things and come and pick them, they're just right at their, their peak, really. They're bursting with life and sort of they're full of the sun. It's like there's life force is still in the plant. Not only does it taste better, but it's also better for you because it is really a living thing. Things you get in the supermarket have, you know, perhaps travelled and are half dead. Courgettes, aubergines, tomatoes, peppers, lettuces, cauliflower and broad beans of unimagined size and quality, straight from the earth to the table. The sheer abundance of good things to eat has brought big improvements to the family's diet. Diet's definitely changed for the better. We eat far more salads and vegetables and less meat. Because you've grown it yourself, it has that extra special flavour, which <laughs> of satisfaction and pride. <laughs> oh. Is it a big one? No. no. Not that big. Most exciting of all are the plants you couldn't grow at all in England. In this climate, watermelon seeds actually turn into watermelons. And Ella gets to sample the farm's very first peach. Oh, there you go. Wonderful. Well, hey, Joe. Joe and his new push chair. Look at this. Come and show me. Come. Banana. Well, what have we got here? Potatoes, courgettes, and beans from Mother's Garden. What do you reckon, Ella? Downshifting to a rural idyll doesn't mean freedom from costly bills. For the second time, Martin and Maggie have got car problems. Have a listen to that. If I can. can you hear it? Yeah, it could be the shock. With money tight, expensive mechanics are out of the question, so it's round to neighbours Mac and Conchita for help. Is it? Yeah, it's pouring up. In return for fixing it, they get to borrow Martin and Maggie's motor mower. <laughs> You look after those for me. After months of waiting for a response about his book from literary agents, Martin's finally been told that they cannot find a publisher. They liked the writing, they thought it was good and everything, but they were concerned that the market was slightly awash with these um, sort of, you know, change your life books around in the, in the genre of the uh, driving over lemons and all that stuff, and I appreciate there's a lot of those around. But what we're doing, I think, is a story, you know, well, it's pretty amazing. I was very keen that we should 
push it now. Um, if, you know, that you shouldn't tr wait till he's finished it, that we should you know, really try and find a, a publisher now. Um, and if we knew that he, like, he'd got, got an advance for it, we, could, we would probably put other things on the back burner so that he could concentrate much more time on, on uh, finishing the book. With no book deal in place, their only source of income will be the farm. The four plum trees behind the house are heavy with ripe fruit. There's a chance to make a few pesetas selling the surplus at the local village shop. We've only been picking really windfalls up until now. We've been picking the odd one off just to eat ourselves. But... We're making jam with them, most. Have you? Yes, darling, but not with, just with windfalls. I haven't yeah, picked yeah, yeah, any yeah. before. Yeah. As I said, we've just picked the odd one. Now my point was it's not just the odd one, you've had quite a few... Yeah, but I've only picked the odd one, oh, right, darling, just to see eat yourself. it myself. Gotcha. Um, we've, been, we've been hanging on, hoping they'd hang on the tree until we could get confirmation that we could sell them. That one. What about that one? The marketplace expects the best, and quality control is vital. Probably our consumption here. Yeah. I think it's all right, Martin, if it's got like a tiny little blemish on that. Like mm. All morning is spent picking and grading the plums. I reckon we've got like five kilos per box. Twelve kilos. Wholesale value about 8,000 pesetas. Only 12 pounds, but the first real income from the farm. In England, we had a comfortable living. We weren't specific about every penny. You don't, you're a bit more relaxed about it. Our income is uh, about a fifth, potentially, of what it was. But we feel richer in other ways. And I think it's actually a good discipline to learn. The farm already provides the bulk of Maggie and Martin's groceries, and now there'll be no need for supermarket jam. Maggie's using the windfall plums in an old family recipe. It's the best bit. My nana used to, and my mum, the great jam makers. Let's see if it's ready. See, it's sort of going wrinkly. Yeah. That means it's it's set, or it will set. It's oh, hmm. I think in England people have lost the plot a bit. You know, lives there have become very complicated and I like the fact here that, you know, most people will go to the market or go to little I like the little shops and I don't know, life just seems far more simpler. I don't know if it's to do with affluence really, whether it's the more affluent sort of society came in, in England that the more complicated it becomes as well. I think, oh yeah, I miss I miss this, that and the other and then I think, well, do I really do I really miss it, or did I really need it? I don't know. Maybe I'm sticking my head in the sand a bit, but I feel I'm better. I feel better for it. It's been a fruitful summer. In the vineyard, the Spanish sun has done a fine job ripening the grapes. Next month is harvest time, when Martin and Maggie will discover whether their first ever crop will be good enough for the bottle. Blues the color. Late summer in Spain. Maggie and Martin's grapes are sweet and make good eating. But these grapes have a more noble destiny. In the bottle, not the fruit bowl. Another month and they'll be ripe for the picking. Meanwhile, Ella has found an alternative use for the farm's irrigation tank. The olives, too, are ripening nicely turning from green to burnished black. We're getting the figs down. Where are the figs, darling? Up there. At this time of year, it's as if everywhere you look, there's more waiting to be picked. Don't panic, everybody. Directly outside the house, there are two trees laden with figs. The almonds are ready to drop, and with a helpful tap, they're gathered in nets and dried in the sun. 
Maggie's got a plan to get the most out of the small almond harvest. There's a family production line de-husking the nuts. We have found a market for these, you know, locally. Um, you know, just, just sell them by the sack load. But I um, thought it might be quite nice to um, actually package them ourselves, put some raffia or something on, and just make them into little gift, little gift baskets of nuts, which we could um, perhaps export, you know, to, to England. This isn't going to make us rich, but it's enjoyable. It really is enjoyable sitting and doing this for half an hour. And we, uh, we sit and talk, and the children around us. Join in. Join in, throw <laughs> them, throw them back in. <laughs> hey, Joe. Good day. <laughs> is that good fun? Yeah. Yeah. At the start of the year, Martin and Maggie had a pot of £10,000 to live on. Now, almost nine months later, just under half remains. After the failure of the book deal, they started looking into ways of earning more money. And recently, Martin's old newspaper agreed to pay him a much needed £200 a time for occasional articles about life in Spain. It's the harvest season in the vineyards of Catalonia and time for Martin, Maggie and their farming neighbours to discover if the year's hard work has paid off. The grapes are the farm's biggest potential earner. Martin and Maggie have been cosseting them since arriving in Spain, watching them grow from tiny buds to hard, inedible green marbles to sweet clusters of rich reds and purples dusted with a frosty bloom. Some of them, they just don't look real. They look so beautiful, quite perfect, you know, in the perfect colour. And Mm. And the shape, you know, beautiful. And the weight, you can feel the sort of the, the heaviness and the weight of them, you know. They look like they're dripping off the bushes, you know. And the bushes are kind of like yielding them like that. Juicy grape. Mm. That'll do nicely. <laughs> the harvest brings with it a party atmosphere and friends and neighbours have pitched up to lend a hand. This particular vineyard, <coughs> Maggie's vineyard as I call it, um, is sort of symbolic of the whole thing really. It's wonderful, it's absolutely wonderful on a beautiful morning like this. It almost felt like when you're a little girl or a child going on holiday, when you sort of it's sort of that early morning. Oh, you know, it's a big day and it's sort of a special day. It reminded me when we used to sort of get up to go off camping or something with the family. You know. um, sort of the expectancy. The early signs are good, with the possibility of a record harvest for the novice farmers. After the harvest, it's doorstep bacon sarnies and mugs of tea all round. The harvest is taken for its final exam at Senor Folce's winery in the village. 
sugar is the key ingredient. A decent wine needs grapes with a high sugar content. The sweetness of the grapes also determines how much Maggie and Martin get paid. Senor Foce's refractor meter shows that the sugar content is above average. It's a proud moment. The density is 12 and a half. We can reach 13 percent alcohol, which is pretty good. It's quite reasonable. Yeah, it's here. Fermentar, this hacer is, la transformación en so alcohol. So it's a turn, and we're coming in at 22. Eh? So, vale. Vale. Aquí la lectura y aquí el grado. Sí. The grapes are pulped before being weighed. Then come the results. The 610 kilos of grapes are worth about 700 pounds, beyond all expectations. Maggie and Martin have beaten the previous owner's harvest by 30 kilos. After a hard morning's grape picking, there's only one thing left to do. Celebrate with a bottle of last year's vintage. It's a sweet taste of things to come. <laughs> I was just sort of thinking, mm, this is good, but next year it will be even better because it has our oh, great. <laughs> A year ago, Martin and Maggie arrived in Spain. The money will always be tight, so Martin is taking up teaching while he continues to write his book. They came to follow a dream. Have they found it? We made the right decision to come here. There is absolutely no question about that. Trying to spend as much time as possible with the children has been wonderful. You know, and reading to Ella at night and Joe, amazing. Seeing Joe change. Things that I know I've seen now, which I would have missed. It's such an appropriate name for this place, Mother's Garden, in sort of many ways. It's sort of like Mother Nature, and it's a wonderful thrill to go and just pull a lettuce or some leeks and eat stuff that fresh. Just being able to go and pick some a bowl of cherries. At the moment, today... There's no inclination to go there back. There is no inclination to go back. No inclination whatsoever to go back. There is too much to excite and to challenge us here and to appreciate here. Mm. There's no going back. 